Hello, my name is Brett Molino, and in this tutorial, we'll be going over the shared key symmetric authentication use case for the Trust Platform Design Suite software. So let's get started. So here we have our device interface architecture. On the left side, we have the host device, which is protected by a SHA-105 uh, security IC. And on the left, we have the client device, which is protected by either a SHA-104 or a SHA-106. So some of the advantages of shared key symmetric authentication is that it is very easy to implement. All you need is to put the same master key into both the client and host device. You can also leverage down to very small and cost-efficient MCUs, down to the 8-bit MCU, which can allow for easy integration into your already existing designs, or if you have any constraints on a project, it can help with that. The last pro we have here is that the master key on both the host and client device are going to be protected in a tamper-resistant secure authentication IC. And this would be our SHA devices, such as the SHA-104, the SHA-105, and the SHA-106. Now, some of the drawbacks to shared key symmetric authentication is that if the master key on either the host or the client were to ever be compromised, then the whole fleet of devices would be compromised. Another risk that really applies to any type of authentication is that there is a risk of the master key being exposed during the manufacturing process. And to prevent this, we provide microchip secure provisioning service, which should eliminate any of those back doors during manufacturing. So here we have a representation of the host device and the client device in the field. For the host, we'd have a SHA-105 device on it, and for the client, we'd have a SHA-104 or 106. And to start this process, we would put a symmetric key in both the host and client device. Then when the devices interface in the field, the host is going to send a random number challenge to the client, and both the host and client will take this random number challenge and hash it with the symmetric key into an algorithm such as SHA-256. This is going to produce a response that the client will then send over to the host, and the host will run both responses through a compare function, which will determine if the client is allowed to interface with the host. So what we'll need for this use case is the Trust Platform Design Suite software. Well, you'll also need the MP Lab software. For hardware, what we'll need is the Crypto Auth Trust Platform Development Kit, along with the SHA-104-105 Microbus Evaluation Board. And then in addition to all that, all you'll need is your laptop and a micro USB board. So let's get started with implementation. All right, so here I have opened the Trust Platform Design Suite software. If you need any information on downloading the software, please go to the links below in the description. So to get started implementing, we're going to go to the Use Cases tab. And in this Use Case list, we're going to scroll to the bottom, and this is where Shared Key is. Select Shared Key, and then scroll to the Device Options, and we're going to select the SHA-104. This is going to open a window for the use case where we're going to implement it into our development kit. Here we have just a general description of the use case. Here we actually have a description of each of the types of symmetric authentication. If we click this arrow here, we can see our cryptographic assets list. So you can see for both the 104 and the 105 that the master key is going to go into slot 3. And then here's the steps of what we're doing right now, actually executing the use case. When we scroll down further on the use case page, we'll come to this transaction diagram. This is what we'll use to provision our development kit. This just shows the provisioning process where we generate the key and implement it in both devices. And then here is the in-field actual runtime, the steps that would be executed for authentication. So before we provision our development kit, we actually need to configure it. This line here describes how we need to go back out into the configurators and set up the devices for SHA-104 and 105 so that slot 3 is assigned to have that key. So we'll go back out to the Trust Platform Design Suite main page and click Configurators. 
And when we scroll down this list, we see the SHA-104 and the 105. We're going to open the SHA-104. This opens the configurator, and in this first part, we're not going to select anything up here at the top. We're going to scroll down and select your device interface. You'll also need to disable the limited key use. And without clicking anything else, we're just going to click Provision Prototype Samples. Click OK and OK. And now slot 3 on the SHA-104 is ready for that master key from the transaction diagram. Now we're going to go back out and do the same thing for the SHA-105. So do not select anything at the top of the page. Make sure you select the device interface and make sure limited key use is disabled. And then without any other inputs, we're going to click provision prototype samples. Okay. And okay. And now slot three on the SHA-105 is ready for that master key as well. And now we can go back to the use case window and we can actually execute all the steps in this transaction diagram. So the first thing we're going to do is generate the master symmetric key and input it into the host and accessory device. We need to put in a little input here. I'm going to select the device interface and then generate a key. Click OK. And we can see that this step was executed successfully in the output window here. Next is when the devices are actually in field. This is the execution that they'll do. So we'll click one and the host is gonna generate a random number challenge and send it to the accessory. The next step is for the accessory to produce a response to send back to the host. And as we scroll down here, we can see all the steps are being executed. And the last step, the host is gonna check that response with its own to make sure they match. And we can see that the whole use case execution was complete. So now that the development kit you have is completely provisioned, you can actually go and click MP Lab Project. And this will just open MP Lab to the project with all the files you need for this use case. And now the next steps You'll either need to create more prototypes or you're ready to get your first verification units. So I'll go into that process, which is detailed in the conclusion here below. So next, we'll go back into the SHA-104 configurator. And using the configurator to get your verification units and create new prototypes is actually very similar. We're going to select the use case which is symmetric authentication. You select the device interface. And when we scroll down here to the bottom, you can see that slot three is highlighted. When we click slot three, we can input the key, which is 32 bytes. You can either enter your key as hex data here, or you can upload it through a .pem file. So if you're making more prototype devices, you can either generate a provisioning package, which will download the file of the configuration to your computer, making it easy to put onto more new devices. Or you can click provision prototype sample, which will provision whatever connected device you have for this use case that is connected to your computer. When you're ready for your first verification units, you can go to Salesforce and Microchip will provide you with an RSA key. With that RSA key, you can come and fill in your configuration in slot three using your real keys for your project and then click Generate Encrypted Provisioning Package, which will prompt you to insert your RSA key. And with the RSA key, you'll be able to download the encrypted configuration file. This will be one of four files that you need to provide Microchip on your Salesforce ticket. The second file is the configuration for the SHA-105. So you'll fill in slot three and then click Generate Encrypted Provisioning Package. You'll then put in that RSA key again and you'll have the second file downloaded for your Salesforce ticket. The last two files for the full secure exchange process 
you'll go back out into the main page of Trust Platform Design Suite and select Secure Exchange Process. Now here we have a questionnaire that you'll need to fill out, and these are the last two files that you'll need to send to Microchip. You'll fill out a questionnaire with some details about your project for both the SHA-104 and the SHA-105. Once you've filled the question out for one of the devices, you'll come to the bottom and click Save User Data, and this will download the questionnaire to your computer in a file ready to be uploaded to Salesforce. So you'll go and you'll do that again for the SHA-104 and the SHA-105. And that's a wrap on this use case implementation. If you want any more resources, you can look to the description below where we'll have related content. Or you can look through our YouTube channel for any other use case videos. Thank you for your time.